Good evening friends, it's Alexor again and the stream just finished for the PTL, actually I don't need these and damn, damn, the new 2.0 Blizzard is literally a new game the new Diablo 4, it is an entirely new game and this is all my notes, right, it's not formatted in any form just want to get over it um, the first thing I noticed from this a lot is that Blizzard is actually taking risks they changed a lot of things and they're really going in with crazy stuff as well with one of the biggest mentions actually um, was the room words which we'll get into later where you can actually make your own skills on your items but also they actually confirmed the armory if you know what the armory is that means you can save a current build as it is with the whole skill tree the paragon board and your items you can save that in sort of a stash then you can make an entirely new build and you can just switch back and forth between the builds you have with that armory that is something I've been waiting for a lot because it's a lot of fun to go back and forth with these but also finally they did it finally it is coming it's not going to be in this version as far as we know they are working on it it's still a work in progress but it is at least confirmed that they are actively working on it so it will be coming anytime soon so anyway um they changed the whole game so so let's just go over it first of all progression right now the base level is now changed like the skill tree level is now at to 60 at level 60 you actually go into the paragon that means you get 10 more points in the skill tree you can uh, apply to your character you also get more skill passive skill points and also more new skill points that were mentioned we'll go with this later um, so this is changed 60 is now your max level right after that you also you don't go to 100 anymore you go to 60 that is your max level and then you get into the paragon system after that but 60 is now the maximum they now have new difficulty levels normal hard and expert and penitent and after that you go into the torment level so you have to think about it this way right now you have the torment levels right which is uh, one two three four which is the difficulty of the entire world and now you will get these four up to penitent which is the toughest and after that once you are level 60 once you reach level 60 you go into the torment levels so basically the end game starts at torment one now not four and at torment one also this is where you start dropping ancestral items so this has all been changed the idea is you get into the end game faster but you also can choose the difficulty a little bit in the beginning uh, all of us will of course be playing penitent but this is for the beginners so it's just it, they said it makes the progression smoother we'll see how this actually pays out health damage armor numbers are changed so what this means is actually the huge insane numbers have been really dialed down you won't have your billions of damage um, builds anymore from what i've seen it's roughly about we, we saw some in-game footage at about five digits to maybe six digits to be the highest which i like a lot that has been changed a lot however there's something i noticed later um while they're bringing all this down they also buffing the damage a lot with all the stuff they're adding um so i feel like <laughs> while they bring it down now it will be going up a lot in the end anyway we'll see how this plays out we don't know yet but yeah monster of damage has been smoothed out monsters will always match the player level now um, that is for example in the world level so if you go into right now if you go into the level um, if you torment four with level 70 the enemies have level 100 this will not be happening anymore they will have the same level but apparently this doesn't really matter um, what they said with how things are played out because it's it's moved out with your experience of your own character and the damage they do so apparently it doesn't matter um, you still can go into higher torments faster i think it's now um we go into this in a second actually let's let's not jump ahead less one shots by the enemies and the hp adjustments very simple now difficulty tiers they want all content or endgame content to be playable throughout the entire game even even in the end game meaning right now it really is you play hell tight to level up fast you play a bunch of nightmare dungeons maybe even that to get your glyphs up and then in the end you do the pit and now infernal halls and everything else is pointless you never play hell tight ever again nightmare dungeons not even and they want that you or whispers for example and they want that you can play all of it now in um 
in the end game. So what they did now was they put the progression into the pit. When you get to level 60, you unlock the pit right away with that in Torment 1. So basically you get to the pit right away. And then you can stack up the, the higher you get into pit levels, the higher you can also get into Torment levels. So this is your progression going forward. First of all, also very important, the highest pit tier now is 100 and not 200. And the idea why they're doing all this is, they want to keep... Like if you can go, or right now you can go to pit 200, you can go Nightmare Dungeons level 100. Then you can um, do Infernal Halts tier 8. Right, so it's just not clear with the levels what level actually the current dungeon or whatever has. It's not intuitive. And that's the idea, I want to make it more intuitive. So what's coming from this is, um, Pit is now 100, and 6 you get to, to Torment 1, and uh, your level, and the Glyph level also, is now actually the same as the Pit level. I get into later, the Glyphs, I actually go to level 100 now as well, yes. It's not an infinite grind, just so you know. The idea is you get to the end game faster and the feeling for progression feels better. You know better what level your character actually is, what he can take on, etc. It seems all complicated. It is. Um, you see I have a tough time explaining it and I don't want to go into detail because I don't understand it well enough to explain it. I'll have to play it on the PTR next week, which is coming on Wednesday. So we'll see how it actually plays out. For now, it's a little bit complicated. I think the idea is, and it sounded overall good, that it's just trying to make it all more smooth in how you progress through the levels. Itemization. Item power changes are generally down. Um, it seems like the max is now 800 in power level, so you don't have your 925 anymore. I'm not sure about this. They didn't really mention it directly, but 800 was the highest I saw in all the uniques they showed. So maybe that's that's a thing. Um, also, all the item power level is generally way down for the regular ones. So I, I guess this just had to happen to adjust for the um, level change. We'll see how this actually what this actually means in game. From 59, uh, 51 to 59, there's a lot of jumps in item drop levels or like drop rarity. So um, once you get to 60, you get much better items. Ancestors now start at Torment 1. So once you get into the pit, level 60, pit and Torment 1, then you can drop ancestral items. Sacred items are gone, which I like because they didn't make sense anyway in my eyes. Um, don't exist anymore, I think. No, they don't exist anymore. And this is giving ancestral items now always have a greater affix. At least one. At least one. They can have more, but they have at least one. But they are also rarer. Because now you actually have to pick up all the items you drop to see if they have a greater affix you want. But thankfully you're not overloaded with tons of them, so you have to sift through them all the time. Um, also the game really needs a loot filter, which wasn't announced sadly, but there we are. So we'll see how this plays out. It definitely changed a lot on how the, how the itemization actually is. You now have only Ancestrals, they only go to 800 item power from what we've seen. They always have a great affix, at least one, but they seem to be rarer in general. This applies to Uniques as well as Legendaries. Now a key fancy thing, the Paragon, um, the Glyphs now rank 200 as I said before. They now gain a legendary bonus at level 46, including a second radius increase. Yes, you heard that right. You get your, at level 15 you get your radius increase, no it's 21. Ah shit, I don't remember that, this was changed, it was either 15 or 21. It's your first radius increase and at 46 you get a second one, so it gets even bigger on the Paragon board and they can go up to level 100 and you level them, glyphs, glyph levels are similar to pit levels so a higher pit level than glyph level means upgrade. That means first of all the glyphs are now not leveled anymore in the Nightmare Dungeons, they are now in the pit. Okay, key thing. And the master working materials actually now get in Nightmare Dungeons. I don't know exactly why they switched that but whatever. Meaning if you can do a pit level 50 and you have a glyph that is level 50, 46 once you've done the pit level 50 you have 100 percent chance to get your glyph or any glyph to level 50. 
So the idea is to make everything streamlined. It all has now the same level as the pit. So the pit is sort of the backbone now of your leveling progress. It tells you where your character is, what it can do, where your glyphs are at, etc. However, this also means level 100 is almost impossible due to most builds can't do it. Because if you think about it right now, right now pit level 200 is the maximum, right? Most builds, except the broken ones, which are usually 2 or 3 per season, cannot do that. So you won't ever be able to actually get a glyph to level 100. But it seems you only need 46, because uh, level 46 is what is 21 right now, where you have the max radius increase, you get a legendary node, and after that you just get increased percentage bonuses the higher you get on a glyph. Then again, you are you have more incentive to actually level the glyphs because playing the pit is better um, now than it is before. One one absolute win thing is the Paragon points are now shared across the realm. You heard that right. That's a W for alts because that means if you get your alt account, alt character to 60, it immediately gets all the now 300 Paragon points. Okay. Yes, they will now have 300 Paragon points and all the characters you make new will gain that immediately. So once you get to 60, you have a huge power spike in your build. Which I don't know if this was intended to work that way with the huge power spike, but whatever. But it also means with 300 Paragon points, builds will be OP as fuck. Because you have so many points now to put in them and um, legendary nodes and glyphs even though they said there will be a maximum on paragon boards you can add okay we don't know the number they probably aren't safe on that yet but there will be a maximum we'll see how that plays out anyway this is still this is still great because farming the paragon on all the character each character was just annoying for me anyway um, i hate that so this is a great change I personally don't like this. What I would have wanted to see is they actually bring the Paragon points down to like 100, but the points themselves on the boards are less, but they are stronger. Meaning instead of getting five int with one node, you get, I don't know, 1% more vulnerable damage. 10% more, no, like that's too much, like 3% more resource regeneration. So each single point actually has more value and you don't sit there with like, ah, I got a new Paragon point. Five int, great, it doesn't do anything. I don't notice any change, it sucks. Let's move on. I think they these points should be more valuable in putting them in the boards. They went the other direction with giving us even more points. <laughs> Whatever. Um, yeah, but you can now really throw in stuff in the, the points. And the maximum of the boards, the idea for this is because right now you usually just want to have as many glyphs as possible. So you just want to have as many boards as possible. What they want you to do is to actually take more points in the boards and look at your pathing and the legendary nodes instead of just getting glyphs. That's the idea. There was a change to tempering, the weapon tempering. So only for the weaponing, weapon tempering. This is now multiplicative, meaning if you have a 20% crit chance, that is multiplicative with all the other chances you have now. That is a huge change, which is again where I said that the damage will go up insane again, even though they brought it down a lot. Absolute key thing though, the best thing so far is maximum, well not the best thing, but the big win is there are now a maximum of four affixes in tempering. You know if you go in some of these, like utility I think sometimes has, you have six or seven affixes that you can roll in each tempering. That means it's a one in seven chance to get the affix you want. Now it's always a 1 in 4, which is great. So much less tempering RNG. That is lovely. For the general class balance, there's also a lot. Ultimates can have skill ranks now. Yeah, they go from 1 to 5, and this usually increases damage or cooldown reduction. This is cool if ultimates wouldn't suck so much in this game, but oh well. There's only one ultimate skill, this uh, only one ultimate still, like if you have the Shaco for example, you don't get plus 5 to all the ultimates, uh, you can still only have one. Each class got a new skill, but you know I only care about the Sorcerer, so um, I'm actually going to show some footage here. This is a skill called Familiar, it's a great thing, we have a Conjuration skill, 
and it conjures, um, depending on the last element you played, it conjures this familiar. And if you switch your elements, it conjures more of them and um, does more damage. So that is very lovely. I like this a lot. Actually, it looks very good damage-wise. You should definitely check out the other classes as, as well. I only went over the Sorcerer. Druid also has some interesting ones. And the Rogue apparently is also very strong um, from what I've seen. But yeah, I like this actually getting Conjuration skill with a fitting, with fitting passive points and a fitting unique. This is what, sort of a side note here, what Blizzard always does. It's just throwing in... How do I phrase it? Blizzard balances Diablo very linear in my eyes. <clears throat> Meaning, the new uniques that are coming to the game are really just enabling a build they pre-designed. Like one build. That's what it does. Like the unique for the familiar over here just enables the familiar, right? The same thing for the other classes. And what I... Or it just gives you more straight damage. What I want to see is something really crazy. And there were some aspects they threw in that were kind of cool. But I want to see this in like items. That you have an item that has a completely off the top affix that does something really crazy or like an aspect um, that not just adds damage or enables a build you already have from your skill tree, but something completely crazy. Maybe we'll have this soon, but. Um, that's really what I want to see. Also, two new Mythics. Here of Perdition, Mythic Unique Helm, Affixes, Inherent, 200% damage to Angels and Demons. And they actually did not mention, they did not want to say what this means. Will we actually be able to play in the Heavens again? They did not, they refused to say what this means. So, whatever. 10% Critical Strike Chance. Like a hit chance, movement speed, plus two to call skills, and power, succumb to hatred and earn mother's favor, increasing your damage dealt by 60%. And this one is key. Briefly steal mother's favor from nearby allies by slaughtering enemies. So what this means is, if you have a party of four players, they all have this helm, one of them can steal the mother's favor, basically the 60% damage from the other ones, and stack that. So you can get, I don't know, 250 or 40% more damage. And that is just a multiplicative percentage damage on the damage you already do. That is kind of insane, actually. This is weird. I guess they added this because of the new co-op mode. Kind of crazy though, still. <laughs> then we have the Shroud of False Death, Mythic Unique Chest Armor. Look at this. Inherent. Plus one to all passives. That is very powerful. Especially now since we got new more like more passives um, for all classes. That is insane. 111 to all stats, maximum life, 33 damage to next attack after entering stealth, 11% resource generation, and the power is if you haven't attacked in the last two seconds, gain stealth and 40% movement speed. And you do a lot more damage after entering stealth. So this is mostly for the rogue, but you can play it on any other class just for this. <laughs> kind of crazy actually. This one was actually not even mentioned in the in the thingy, so let's see. Affixes. Inherent on what's it called? Shattered Vow. 400% damage to healthy enemies. 440 maximum life. 30% attack speed while berserking. Damage over time. Lucky it up to 44% chance to become berserking. Execute enemies afflicted by more damage over time than remaining life. Interesting. Very interesting. So yeah. Um, so these are the two mythics that came to us. So again, there's there's a lot. I'm not going to go over the whole patch notes because that's going to be a three hour video. For now, let's go over the, the sort of the gist of it to make this fast. It's already 20 minutes long. Fuck. Anyway, Q, Q oil, quality of life. You now have a preferred town portal you can set. So if you want to always portal to carry girl after you've been in the nightmare dungeon, you hit T, you always go there. Great. You get a new dungeon key inventory tab for your Nightmare, Sigil, Keys and whatever. It's all a new tab. Socketable inventory tab. We go into this with the rune words, which is insane. And one more stash tab, which I found to be very laughable. We still can't move them around, but whatever. Now the big one, the rune words. You can now find these runes, okay? Now oh, wait. 
you can now find these runes. You always you have two and you can put them in your item. We can probably see it. Oh, they have all the runes, okay. They didn't even put it in here. Fuck. So basically, you have your your items that have slots where you currently put your gems in, right? Yeah, like your rubies and whatnot. You can now put in runes, and you have one rune, the, the top one, that has a trigger. For example, travel five meters, and then you have the bottom one that has a action after the trigger triggers. So when you travel five meters, replace your next evade with the sorcerer's teleport, blinking further, dealing damage, and becoming unstoppable. Yes, you read it right. If you have this rune, any class in the game now can have the teleport from the sorcerer. For example, you travel five meters, you then have your teleport. There's also other things we saw. For example, this auto can autocast earthquake for the barbarian, and there's a lot of other shit. It's actually mentioned um, down here what they all are. I'm not going to go over all of these. Become injured or crowd controlled. Also interesting to play with this. Fast numbering. Inflict a crowd control that isn't slow or chill. Cast evade. Your minion companion kills an enemy or dies. <laughs> Drink a healing potion. Uh, spend 5% for maximum resource. So you can these can be used a lot with also the passives and all that. So the whole rune word system. That is absolutely massive. You guys probably don't have an idea how massive it actually is. We would have to see what this actually do. Cast the same non-channel skill three times in a row. Also crazy. Like it up to 100% chance against injured enemies. So there's some crazy stuff, right? The legendary ones, rare ones, legendary. Um, cast a skill for cooldown automatically, right? So you can auto cast these things. Insane. This is an absolutely insane thing they added. And just, just, I love this a lot because it makes it gives a lot of new directions you can make with builds and how you actually build your items for example so um, this is gonna be it's gonna be very lofty I am very much looking forward to, to how this plays out they also mentioned on sort of a side thingy you can craft mythics with runes you have so you have to have a sort of a free rune combination lying around maybe three legendaries or whatever then you can turn it into one splintering spark. Is it splintering? Splintering spark thingy. So you can turn this into runes and uh, mythics. And the key thing about this is that you can actually trade runes. So for example, you have these, you just need one more rune. You can trade it in. You can instantly build your mythic. That's crazy, isn't it? So it makes it much easier to get your mythics now. Also, John mentioned in chat, rightly, um, this now makes two handles actually good. Because of these runes, because the problem right now with two handles is you're actually lacking at least four affixes, right? If you think about it, you have one weapon that has the four affixes and the max two tempo affixes. So having two is always better because then you have two more tempering affixes and you have three more implicit affix affixes by having both of them. So I, and this is also true in other games, Last Epoch is the same. Two handles are always bad. Unless they give you a really great bonus. But now with the rune words, they actually are stronger. That's great. So overall this, um, the whole rune world thingy, great addition. We will see in PTR how it plays out exactly. I hope they actually make it strong enough so it's worthwhile, but we'll see. There were some questions. The point of the Nightmare Dungeons now, and as I said, Nightmare Dungeons now have the master working mats, but it also seems like you get a lot more because now of course, the end boss drops the most, but the also elites in the Nightmare Dungeon will now drop Master Rank materials. So you don't necessarily have to play through it, but it also sounds like they drop more than the pit did. Sounds like it, we don't know. We can, uh, actually, this was a question. Armory was confirmed, it will be coming. Marketplace, they didn't say anything about that. There's no marketplace as far as we know. No hideouts or world building. It wasn't denied, they just didn't answer the question. Um, the key thing to me also was, this is the patch 2.0, it's not season 6, like info. Season 6 will also have more stuff, whatever that is, um, I guess seasonal mechanics and all that. And it's also not the same as the expansion, I thought this is all the same. 2.0, season 6 and expansion all launched at the same time, maybe it will launch at the same time, but they will still have more info, so there's even more info coming for season 6, which is crazy. Now all this, all this we just mentioned will be on the PTR 
starting next Wednesday for two days where not all is unlocked because the first two days on Wednesday they want you to actually try the new leveling system, the new difficulties, the new progression system and on the Friday room words and all the other staff stuff will be unlocked. And there's also a vendor in Kiovashat you can talk to which can actually get your levels to max, you get your paragon max, you can even craft mythics to test. It's really a test realm, okay? There's some really crazy stuff. Evoke the sorcerer's mystical frost nova inflicting freeze and vulnerable onto enemies. Evoke the spirit bonds concussive stomp. By the way, they also said anything you evoke this way with the rune birds will be the max level of that skill. So these rune birds are gonna be insane. These are gonna be really insane. Invoke the sorcerer's material and dealing damage to enemies. Pestilent swarm. Summon a spirit wolf to attack enemies for 8 seconds. <laughs> it's gonna be insane. So you can have spirit wolves on the sorcerer. Making a minion sorcerer. This is mind blowing. Absolutely crazy. So I like this so much. I really did a great change. Tell me what you think of this in the comments. I think this looks absolutely insane. Crazy. What the fuck is going on? And I like that. I like that Blizzard is taking risks, is going crazy on their stuff and trying new things. And the rumors look insanely strong. And I like that. Together with the mercenaries that are coming. Fantastico. I like it a lot. So let me know what you think of it. I will see you tomorrow on stream. And until then, you all have a good time.